Hey y'all, Melissa here with you today and I've got another hack for my sweatshirt hacking theme this month. Today I'm going to show you how to take the same pattern that I'm wearing and instead give it this button flap collar here. So let's see how to do it. The supplies you'll need to make this button cowl is some extra fabric, approximately half a yard, and you'll need two buttons. Um, or more buttons if you're using smaller ones. These are about one inch buttons that I'm using. The first step to figure out how much fabric to cut for your cowl is to go ahead and finish the rest of your shirt except the neckline. And then you're going to want to measure your neckline. Make sure that when you measure that you do it on the seam line, not on the raw edge. So you're just going to go ahead and take your measuring tape and curve it along the seam line there to get a neck measurement. Now to your total neckline measurement, whatever that is, make sure you measure the front and the back, add them together. And then you also want to add however much you want your fabric to overlap. So in this case, I'm going to be doing an overlap of one inch, so I need to add that. And then you also need to add seam allowances to each end. So I'm going to do a half inch on each end, which means that I will take my total neckline measurement and add two inches. In this case, my neckline measurement is 21 and a half inches. So my cowl is piece is going to be 23 and a half inches long. Then you have to decide how high up the neck do you want it to come. Now I'm not actually probably ever going to wear this as um, all the way up but I do want plenty of it. I like to have plenty of extra fabric to slouch. So the measurement that I landed on for mine is um, 13 inches. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be folding that in half, which gets me to six and a half inches. And then I've got that half inch seam allowance, so it'll be a six inch cowl. And then that's gonna get mostly folded in half, so it'll actually only come up three inches from my neck. You'll see how all of this works as we put it together. Here is my 23 and a half by 13 inch piece of fabric that I am going to be using for the cow. Now you'll notice that I chose on this particular fabric to use what traditionally would be the right side as the wrong side. And I just liked the fuzzy loopy texture of this and I wanted it to be on the outside. And I like the color as well. So the first step to making this is going to be to fold your fabric right sides together. And in my case, this is the loopy side. And we're going to match up the long edges and then stitch across those short edges. So take this over to your machine and you do want to sew this with a stretch stitch just in case this stretches at all. And I'm using that half inch seam allowance that I mentioned. And then on my machine, I like to use the little lightning bolt stretch stitch. If your machine doesn't have that, you can use a um, short stitch length narrow width zigzag as well. Once you have this stitched on those short edges, you can turn it right side out. Okay, then we want to go ahead and overlap one edge and go ahead and measure this out just to make sure that you don't overlap more or less than you intended to. And you could base this together. I prefer to just use pins to hold it in place. Okay, now we're going to take this and we're going to put it into the neckline of the shirt. And I don't want this overlap to be directly at the shoulder seam, and I'll show you why here. If I put that directly at the shoulder seam, then when it folds down, you see how it folds right onto the shoulder. I would prefer it to fall a little bit onto the front of my neck. So I am going to rotate this just a little bit. Let's say maybe an inch or so from my shoulder seam. And then this way, when I have it in here, and the collar falls, it's going to go just a little asymmetrical right in front of me. So I'm going to pin that where I wanted it 
and then go ahead and pin in the rest of the neckline. Now remember, since this cowl is the same length around as your neck on the seam line, you should not have to stretch either the neckline or the cowl to get them to match. If you find yourself having to do that, you're gonna to wanna to adjust your overlap because something went wrong with your math somewhere. And this is going to take me just a bit because I'm using this fabric that really, really wants to curl along the edges. So let me go ahead and turn the camera off and then I will come back once I've got this neckline in so I can show you what it looks like. All right, y'all, here's what this looks like once it is stitched in. Now, I did go use my serger for this because this loopy fabric is actually shedding little pieces. So I wanted to make sure and encase those edges. But you could also do this with any stretch stitch on a regular sewing machine. So once I turn that cowl up, you can see how it is on my neckline. And it's actually extremely similar to the one that I'm wearing until we go ahead and fold it on this edge. And you can see here's where it overlapped and those overlapped edges can fall. And now, just to give the illusion that I could button this up if I wanted, which I could, um, I'm going to go ahead and stitch on a couple of buttons here. So these are decorative, but also if I went ahead and put buttonholes on the other side, I mean, I could fold it up and button these. I'm just highly unlikely to ever actually do that. So I'm not gonna make the buttonholes, I'm just going to sew on the buttons. Okay, for the button placement, I'm just going to eyeball it. Figure out approximately where do I want those to fall. And then hand sew them on. If you need additional help with button sewing, um, I have a video that I will link below for how to sew them on by hand and by machine. And there we go. Now remember, all this month I'm doing hacks to this sweatshirt pattern. Other ones that I've done included doing thumb holes on the cuffs and the cowl neck with the drawstring that I'm currently wearing. So make sure to check out that playlist where I will add all of the hacks and you can see how to do all of them.